Hey, welcome to this video. Today I'm gonna be sharing with you three tips I have for drawing clothing and folds. Um, it's one of those things I really wanna get better at. And <clears throat> especially if you wanna draw characters and, and uh, people, you gotta get good at drawing clothing. So in this video, I got three tips for you and uh, let's just get started. <laughs> All right, so today I'm starting in my sketchbook, uh, drawing with pen. And my first tip for this video is to draw with pen and don't erase. I suggest drawing with pen because it forces you to focus and think about where you want each fold and crease. Uh, it also helps you build confidence and I can tell that I'm getting more confident with my lines and where I place uh, certain things, certain folds, certain creases in the clothing. This exercise helps me build a lot of confidence in my line drawing and so this translates to digital drawing as well. When I move into Clip Studio Paint, I don't really have to erase a lot because I'm confident in the lines that I'm putting down. And so it's just all about being loose. Uh, if you mess up, you start over, uh, start a new sketch. Uh, but overall, I just try and, for this page, I was just trying to get as many figures on the page as possible. And some are more complete than others, but what I really was focused on while drawing these figures is the big shapes of the clothing. And it does take some figure drawing knowledge to, to be able to draw these uh, sketches. I am using reference, but it doesn't make it easier because with pen, you have to know the human form and know the human body and where to place these elements uh, with confidence. And so, yeah, first tip, draw with pen, don't erase. I feel like erasing will decrease your confidence in your lines and you could be sitting there for 30 minutes on one drawing because you're too focused on one sketch and trying to erase and re-erase the, the folds that you've drawn. Uh, just be confident in what you drew. If you do mess up, just start over and don't worry about it. So my second tip is to just keep on drawing, getting get in as many reps as you can especially in your sketchbook that's what it's for it's not supposed to be perfect and here you can see i have moved into clip studio paint and started drawing some figures from reference but yeah when i'm drawing and when i'm practicing these things i just want to draw as much as possible uh get as many reps in as i can uh it's okay if you mess up it's just practice and, and don't feel like you need to rush when you do this uh, it might look like I'm drawing fast in a time lapse, but it's like at 50x speed. When I really do this, I'm just taking my time and making sure I get it right and focusing on the big shapes that I see in my references. When I draw the clothing, I'm keeping the shapes simple, simplified. Uh, I'm just drawing the big forms first. And then when I draw folds, I'm paying attention to where the tension points are in the folds and I'm keeping them simple. I'm not drawing super realistically or I'm not drawing in realism. I want to draw in a semi semi realistic style. So I don't really care about portraying the folds like one to one accurately. I just want to keep them super simplified and make sure that the folds are based on the points of tension. All right, so the last tip I have for this video is to pay attention to the points of tension or pressure. I actually learned this from TB Choi in her art book. And basically this is where all of the folds in the clothing start. And so for example, in my characters here on the side, you can see most of my folds start around the shoulder area the elbow area, the waist, and the knees and ankles, depending on the type of clothing that the character is wearing. But it's usually going to be around the shoulders, waist, and uh, the elbow area. And that's where the folds are going to start. And so this, I have some reference here on the side just to show you what I mean by that. So in this reference to this guy, the point of tension is where he's bending his arm here. And so the cloth that's 
going around his arm is being folded and contorted right here. And so that's where you see all the folds at. And same thing on this side. And so when I'm drawing my characters on this side, I wanna, I use reference for these drawings, but when I'm drawing the folds, I'm keeping them simple, uh, using big shapes to draw the folds and making sure that they are coming from the points of tension. So shoulder area, elbow area down here and same thing with this figure and her clothing. And so you can see that here as well in, in the other references, wherever there's tension or wherever the cloth is being bent, that's where the folds start. Uh, it's actually not that hard. I feel like I was overcomplicating it when I was drawing, uh, first starting to draw clothing and stuff. Uh, if you just break down the reference, you can see where how simple it can be to draw folds. You just gotta pay attention to where they start and why they're bending and why they're contorting because clothing is on top of the figure, right? And so it just contorts and folds uh, based off the shape of the person. And so as you can see on this guy, same thing, same tension point is the shoulder. This is where the, the cloth is uh, folding, but Based off the material, it, it doesn't have too many folds or creases. But here you can see, there's a clear example. He's bending his knee here and uh, most of the folds start to appear where that knee is bending. And so depending on the type of cloth that the person is wearing, the type of clothing that they're wearing, I've noticed that with baggy clothing, like what they're wearing and with more loose fitting clothing, like this t-shirt here, you can see more folds. And so that's something to keep in mind. If the character is wearing something more that more tight fitting, uh, you might not see as much folds, but that's what I've been learning about this whole process. And I really want to get better at drawing clothing. And so I'm just challenging myself to do that and uh, practicing this in clip studio. So, Hopefully this video helped you out and I will see you in the next one. Peace.